Well, welcome everybody to the first episode of Blockchain Bay. I'm here with a fellow YouTuber, Joe P, who is the owner of Network Bits. Joe, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, What's your background in crypto and just the whole industry altogether? Yeah. So, uh, start off here. Um, so I guess I'll start off my background. Uh, very technical. Been a network engineer for about ten years now. Usually work with uh, Cisco devices, router switches, firewalls, servers, and um, companies I've worked for in the past. They, they've talked. You know, the, me and my friends there talked about crypto. 2017 was pretty hot. And uh, we, I invested then, probably lost about two hundred and fifty dollars. I remember those days. Yeah, yeah, and it was kind of like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's there's something here, but not now. And they lost interest for a little bit. And uh, another company that I consulted at, there was a real smart consultant there. He's a CCIE instructor, which those are the brainiacs of the industry. And he just kept going on and on about blockchain and said, well, this, there's certainly something here. The big financial companies are doing their due diligence in blockchain and cryptocurrency, trying to figure out if that application would help uh, their business from whatever angle. So it started to spark my interest again. and. Right around when the time Wall Street bets was happening, I was, I totally missed out on that show. Um, but I was like, probably going to see something from crypto here pretty soon. And I started buying again. And sure enough, you know, the market took off. And I was looking for things to mine. Like I was really considering GPU or ASIC mining. And I stumbled across Helium. And I just said, this makes all the sense in the world. As when I decided to open up a YouTube channel, I got a couple of helium hotspots of my own. And I was making content to help people out, get set up, understand the system. I've talked about some other crypto projects as well. They're all on the low powered side. I do intend on getting into GPU mining, just don't really have the the place for it right now. It's painful um, right now. The, the yeah, energy cost is is insane, especially with the low profitability. Yeah, been about a year going strong on the YouTube channel. Of course, it's had its ups and downs, and here we are. I think I've known you over this entirety of this year, and we've yeah, collaborated I think in the so. past before. Wow, it's been, it's been a while. Yeah, the last time we made a video together was the, the Christmas thing, uh, the Helium giveaway. Yes. Which was, uh, it's going to be a year in, in three months, which is crazy. Time flies. Mm. Um, with the Helium, I know we've experienced a lot of ups and downs with them. What do you think, uh, I don't know, do you have any advice for anyone mining Helium? Or what, what are your thoughts on the whole, the whole project? I know you mentioned that on your channel, for anyone that's not watching this, you were kind of... Uh, going to stray away from and focus on more broader cryptocurrency projects and other projects. And I feel the same way. I'm kind of burnt out on helium just because there's not much for me to talk about. Uh, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. So I'm still keeping my hotspots online. I'm not really investing any money into any of the rigs I have. I'm not going to get into 5g. I don't think all hope is lost, but there's a lot of problems right now. It looks like we're kind of at an inflection point where there's certainly, you know, the, the, the system can be rectified. It, it can go on to be a, a successful project. And I think that's what they're doing with HIP 70. Yeah. But it, every time there's a major change, there's a lot of FUD around it. And, you know, I, I hope it works out, but Having a channel so focused on helium, I've gotten a lot of exposure to people's issues and how they perceive the network. And I've gotten to see some of the inner workings as well. Yeah, it hasn't and been yeah, all, like, all cons for me either. I still have my 
my miners up and running. But I mean, we met through Helium and pretty much everyone that I've met in the crypto space has been through Helium. Yeah. So it, and it, at first it was a lot of fun. I had a blast doing this. Um, now it's, you know, it, there's a lot of things going on that have made it not so enjoyable for me. That's why I'm moving away from it within the coming days. I still have a few videos I have to finish out, but I'm not really, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It just doesn't leave me in a good mood. Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, a, a lot of the way that people treat you in the Helium servers and on forums too. It's kind of unprofessional when, I mean, we're by all means not like extremely professional, but we have some sort of code that we go by and when they're uh they're kind of you can't tell when they're joking or not and that's just a problem with the internet you're having a hard time telling if people are being serious when they respond and stuff a lot of people are just trying to get people to laugh in the server yeah. well i think you've probably experienced the same thing but being a youtuber excuse me you get crapped on all the time yeah they think you're another ignoramus making videos spreading fud and i've been very supportive of helium i've given very detailed information. There's a few things I've gotten wrong along the way, but everyone has. Yeah. Uh, but some of the things that were said from people who are, I don't know what you want to say, bigger names within that group, just like, I don't I don't get it. I don't get what I did to uh, rub some of them wrong. And since that, I've just been like, whatever, you know? I go in there and shit post and joke around. I was, yeah, I, I don't really care to talk about the whole situation there. That's fine. I was expecting to be banned sooner or later, and it happened. Fine. That's uh, the way of the road. Well, yeah. if you want to move on from Helium, we can talk about some other projects that have let us down over the year. Um, obviously, with COVID, and people are still using that as a supply chain. Uh, they're still saying that it's mm -hmm. having effects on the supply chain. I can see that. But there's a lot of projects that have failed to deliver, like Revofi, which we both touched on on our channels. Um, and then there's also Deeper, which I don't think I made a video. Did you make a video on Deeper? on Deeper. So we can talk about Revofi first if you want. Yeah. Um, just looking at that, immediately there are people in the Helium community who are saying, this is, this is BS. And they started off Revofi basically by saying we're also going, going to do helium mining and it'll be dual mining. We'll have our own network as well. And they had all these great ideas and big promises that really didn't match up. It, yeah. it didn't make sense to begin with. I'm, I don't believe in this, you know, Wi-Fi mesh network. Like unless you have a whole country on board to do it, like India does for like their open Wi-Fi DABA stuff, it doesn't really work just yeah. because of the technical shortcomings, I guess you would say obstacles, uh, either way. And here we Remember are. I had all these big promises that they failed to deliver on. They got denied in the hip 19 and it just seemed there was something off there. How many months has it been? I think, I think it's been nine months since they announced they were going to ship and there's still, to my knowledge, have been no devices in the uh, hands of any customers. What they ended up doing allegedly is shipping them to some of the people that invested a big amount of money and we don't know if they actually did or anything like that. And uh, I mean, they've been cycling through employees over there. They closed down their Discord server, so the only thing you can see on the server is just announcements which to me is a big red flag on top of everything else. And they even made um, a community Revify server to try and just keep talking about Revify because it just got, I guess, out of hand. But to be fair, they were giving no announcements. Uh, there was just a lot going wrong with that company. Yes, and even if they are trying to deliver on their promises, this is something that we found out over the past two years you need to have some sort of experience in production and manufacturing if you're going to mass deliver products. 
there's so many people in this space who have these great ideas and maybe very talented, but they're not, they don't know how to run a business. Exactly. They don't know how to mass manufacture. And like we've seen, they fail to meet these promises, then get labeled a scam, sometimes unfairly, usually if they're trying to deliver on their promises. And especially with COVID, and how it affected the supply chains and the chip shortage, it exacerbated the problem. I got Either push. way, me and you both agree that Rebel 5 was a scam. And yeah. when people started coming forward, specifically the developers, yeah, it, the writing was on the wall there. I'm not going to out anybody, but I did have some moderators as well reach out to me and... Uh, Actually, just recently in the Crypto Lab server, somebody posted some some stuff about Revify, like some of the moderator logs. I got to read it a little bit. Uh, it, it wasn't as interesting as I thought it would. I got a question for you, though. Do you think yes. if Revify outsourced their manufacturing like Helium did and bring on all of these other customers, do you think they would have had a different opportunity or a better chance? Because we saw with Helium, they had some fails, too, like with Synchrobit and Nebra. And uh, they they didn't deliver a lot of their devices, or if they did, it was just very very poor quality. I, I don't think so. I mean, there's so many things wrong with what they were doing. They were trying to do numerous, I, whatever you want to call it, concepts in computing and like bridge that together. I think the overall main one, this open Wi-Fi thing, I, I don't believe in it. Like I just Companies have tried that in the past, large companies, and it's not been profitable in the vast, vast majority of cases. It works different with Helium because it's a different technology. It's not Wi-Fi. Yeah. We've talked about that before, but I think Justin just comes up with like all these ideas, and when you look at actual technical implementation, it's a pipe dream. Yeah, I I would like to hope that someday something like that, um, minus the Wi-Fi, there was a lot of stuff that could have been interesting to see. So um, maybe someone will take that idea and move forward with it. Uh, speaking of new ideas, uh, do you want to talk about PiFi a little bit? Uh, it's a new project that has come onto our radar. We actually know the people that founded it. And we're really, uh, I think, Joe, you already made a video talking about it. I'm, I've yet to make a video talking about it, but I do want to talk about it. It's basically, um, you're, you're using a Raspberry Pi, so it's relatively low cost of entry and a sensor, and you can um, mine, essentially. So if you guys have followed Planet Watch, uh, they had their Aware Elements device, and they actually, they decided to part ways, Aware and Planet Watch. So the Aware Element... Is, was useless for a good period of time for most people and pi fi is actually allowing that sensor to work on their network so do you have anything you want to talk about with uh pi fi well it's a project that's in its infancy right now i like yeah. the idea behind it because they are going to continuously come up with sensors that you can integrate off-the-shelf sensors that are compatible with raspberry pies and you get a reading from whatever data it is that you want to take, mostly environmental data. And based on what you're collecting and you choose to share, you're rewarded on that. Which really, when you have a project that you can customize your setup, it brings a lot of engagement through the community. A lot of yeah. people who are interested in boosting their earnings and seeing how they can contribute I like that it's do it yourself. And uh, put people at ease when it, sorry. you know, there's a lot of people who like to buy the devices off the shelf because they don't want to deal with the hassle of putting it together. But then again, when it's do it yourself, kind of hard to say, you know, it's a scam, like a hardware selling project that's going to be a rug pull. Yeah. 
um, Helium actually does have, they still have their Helium console where you can have sensors uh, connected. I myself have a Dragino LHT65, which is a temperature and humidity sensor. It basically just, you know, collects the temperature and humidity and it has a sensor on the device and then it has an external adapter that uh, I actually have stuck out my window so I can get the temperature of inside and outside. And that whole idea, when I heard about that, I thought was really interesting because they also had door sensors and um, soil moisture level, uh, water clarity. They had a whole bunch of sensors and the idea was that this data would be shared on the LoRaWAN network. But it doesn't seem like that is going to be something that they move forward with. It kind of seems like a an oversight or a, um, something that just kind of left on the back burner and they're yeah, pushing like forward. For, yeah, for like personal use yeah. type of dealings where with PiFi, it's an aggregation of all the data that's being shared. Yeah. Where it's basically like, yeah, like if you ever use the app Waze, the way it would describe to me is you see what's going on in that specific area. And it gives you insight to correlated data. You're going to have more of a complete data set as opposed to some of the other projects that are based on data. And I'm, you know, I'm really skeptical of most of them. Hope PiFi works out. I think they have a lot of good ideas. They're in a really good place starting out. And of course, they're friends of ours. You know, we've yeah. been speaking to them over the past year in the crypto lab. So there is some level of trust there where we know. Yeah, we've we, heard. We know, but we're pretty uh, um, confident it won't be a rug pull. Exactly. And we've heard the, the I guess, co-owners or co-founders talk about the struggles that they've had. So it's not like, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they've they been through it. And we, we've talked to them a couple of times about um, just ideas that we had. And it, it's working uh, pretty well right now. They're in beta phase right now. So I believe you can start mining. I think you, is that correct, Joe? So, yes, but it's on the test net. And yeah. those earnings won't be transferred over to mainnet. So the benefit of getting in now is that you're getting a license at a reduced rate. As with the next beta groups, the price will slightly increase every time. And then when it goes to mainnet, it's going to be full price for licensing. I don't think it's going to be something egregious. You get the licensing and software together. And then, yeah, you can add on the custom components. They're also working on integrations for off-the-shelf products, like sensors that you buy for home use or for commercial use. If you're able to share that data back to the to the PiFi, you can submit that to to uh, their database if that device is supported. That's very interesting. I'm looking forward to getting that uh, aware element I just ordered as well as the sensor that they talked about. I think it was a GPS sensor. Um, mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting, and I'm looking forward to make a video about that. GPS is required for you know, location. Yeah. But either way, um, you know, we did mention Deeper earlier on. Were you involved in that at all? That was the VPN service, right? Yes. I was going to buy one of them. They sold a device, didn't they? Well, it yeah, was, it was uh, not much. It had a USB-C port as all of that I remember. And um, I was actually going to buy one. And like right around that time is kind of when it all hit the fan so I didn't make a video on it. It was definitely on my list to make. I think I was actually planning on making a video of the week that everything kind of, I don't, I don't even remember what happened. There's been so much happening. Yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, there were a lot of red flags for me going into that project. I did buy one. It was a neat device, but they had three different types of devices that you could purchase. And basically it's a hardware VPN. So you could, do mining through sharing basically your internet connection, sharing your IP, and that would allow other people to VPN to your house basically or to wherever you put it up, put it, set it up, and they would use that IP address. So there's some uses to it, yes. but one of the biggest drawbacks is that you have to always VPN to a different country. 
which screws with your geolocation. When you go surf the web, everything shows up in a different language and you have to manually change that. Um, you also needed a stake or have a credit score if you wanted to mine. <laughs> now people staked so much of that token and of course it went down severely. I think staking is ridiculous if it's not a critical network function. So what I mean is like, a good example would be helium validators, you have to stake a significant amount of HNT to be a validator. And the reason for that is because they want people to have skin in the game. Basically, if a validator is not being updated, if it's not being administered correctly, it affects the rest of the network negatively. So it does make sense to have staking in many cases. But when you have to do it for just a regular device, it kind of seems like a Ponzi, you know, you're, yeah, I assume, like in my opinion, many crypto projects do this because with staking, it keeps people from liquidating the token yeah. and it drives up price. And maybe you like that, but it just, uh, I think it's a smoke and mirrors type of deal. And then you have all these people who end up staking and losing a significant amount of money because they don't understand like how that can play out, especially when we're at like the very top of a, uh, of a bull run. Like we were, there's a lot of people that, that are not happy with what the result had, have, has been. They're not really breaking even in any sort of way on their investment. So the other, I, I started to raise, well, I guess not questions, but just started pointing out things that as a network engineer are obvious to me, but people may miss. Like the fact that if someone's using your VPN or the VPN connection to your house to do things on your internet connection, that could cause a problem for you. And you have all the armchair lawyer types within certain communities like these who are, are going to swear up and down that this can't happen because this is a law, blah, blah, blah. Even though this is a worldwide project, and regardless of how the law is, it doesn't mean that every investigation is handled correctly. Like, there are risks, and there are just so many deniers. It was like this, uh, like, cognitive dissonance within the community, and anyone who said it was, you know, on the outs. So... That really made me understand that many people invest into these projects without truly doing their due diligence or understanding what's going on whatsoever. What what the you know what what the risks are behind it. Yeah. I covered it on the YouTube channel. Of course, they got kicked off the Helium network because they didn't handle their distribution properly and they were all sold to a distributor who decided to game the network. <laughs> that was a massive black eye for Deeper. And I really haven't heard much since then other than some YouTubers screaming about their earnings. Yeah. Um, if you want to go back to staking for a second, I, I liked how you pointed out it's kind of pointless if it isn't a critical network function. Um like, I think you made a video on heliumstaking.com. Do you remember that site? I mentioned it a couple no. times. Um, I think I did. I made a video on heliumstaking.com. Yeah. So th that was that came around like the time of, yeah, like the peak of the bull run. And basically you could stake your helium. For people that don't know, you could stake your helium token. And I believe those tokens were then used to make validators. And that's how you gained uh, interest back on the tokens so the catch was if you wanted to withdraw it you had to wait um, there was a huge waiting period it was like 24 to 72 hours you had to wait before you could actually withdraw the token so it it kind of slowed down a lot of transactions and uh, from the start it kind of seemed like a little bit of a sketchy website in my opinion but I think it's still up and you can still stake some helium and, and earn off of it. It's just such a small amount. 
And uh, I ended up pulling all my helium out of it just because of how slow it was. And it, it wasn't needed. Like, I don't like to have my crypto just sitting in a wallet, not earning anything. But when I had it on that site, I wasn't sure. And especially some people put a lot of helium in there. You never know if these sites are going to be scams or not. But going back to staking, uh, the things that I do enjoy with staking are on exchanges. Like Binance US is launching new tokens to be able to be staked. I want to say every two weeks, every three weeks, they have Avalanche, BNB, uh, Cardano, um, Poke, uh, Matic. They have a whole bunch. And Coinbase has a whole bunch. That's the kind of staking that I do enjoy where you can cancel it at any time and there's no, there's no, um, you know, you can sell your token immediately. Yeah. Well, going back to uh, the example you use, so when you stake in a validator for Helium, after you stake, there's a six-month cooldown period. So what the risk is for companies like that, if you have a bunch of customers who are providing you with h and to stake and they decide to withdraw it all at once, but the cooldown period is still six months, so you have to wait, they have to wait, the company has to wait six months to pull that, that could be an issue for them. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how they would handle it. Maybe they have h and in the reserve, but... I I suspect that's what some of these crypto exchanges were running into issues like that, especially they were get given massive APY rates for staking, mm -hmm. and depending on which network it is and what the you know the whatever it is that you're staking to, like usually validators, usually they're um you know the large network components. I mean, some of them do provide a very significant return on investment for staking and providing that service, providing that computing power or whatever it may be. The but some of these APYs that these uh, exchanges offered were out of, out of this world, and there were a few articles written about how it was just not feasible. The numbers did not add up. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, when you see those type of APY returns... It's possible, but you have to be skeptical. Oh yeah, on the, I don't know if you ever got involved in Pancake Swap. In I want to say it was about, this was, hmm, September, October, November of 2021, uh, going into the new year for 2022. Pancake Swap and like the DeFi space blew up with the insane, unrealistic APYs and APRs for a lot of the tokens, and I, I, at that point. I had, and the prices of the tokens went up too as the bull run continued, but uh, Pancake, the token was at, I believe, $40, and the APY for a lot of these things were in the thousands. And I was looking at making about, I believe, $100,000 a year uh, easily if it continued. And then there was also um, Time Wonderland and a whole bunch of these people and companies that had a huge, huge APR, APY, and they ended up just failing. And that's that's a huge thing is you got to be skeptical of these. That's why, like I said, like I trust the ones in the exchanges. I still always am skeptical, and I keep a majority of my funds on a hardware wallet because I don't trust anybody, and I think that's a good thing to practice. But uh, for coins like BNB, obviously I'm going to keep it on Binance because it's it's their native token. I feel safe keeping it there. Yeah, um, I, like with any cryptocurrency project that I decide to get involved in, if I'm going to put a significant amount of money in it, you have to read a couple layers deep into it. And it's going to take months to figure out the ins and outs and how all the gears turn. But there are just some fundamentals there that have to be there. So, you know, it's, you know, just not... You know, it's just not a show. It's not smoke and mirrors. And there's a, there's actually a substance behind the project. There's actually a way that this this is uh, planned out. I know I'm yeah, failing um, to describe what, what I want to say here. But, yeah, there's so many scams in this in this space. There are so many 
projects that are just like a pipe dream and they want to have all these offerings, whether it's good intention or not. And they have all these ideas and all this is going to be supported. And it sounds so good to people when they read the white papers. But when you actually look at what it is, it's just like this. This is not anywhere near what they s- describe it as being. And even if it was many of the times, I think there's really no utility for some of the things that are that are based around a, that they're basing a cryptocurrency around. I mean, for every different computing concept, someone's trying to come up with a crypto for it. For every <laughs> yeah. concept of life, someone's trying to come up with a crypto for it. I it's mean, like the rebirth, shoes, the rebirth yeah, of the you, internet or something. With step in shoes. Yeah. I mean, come on. How is that? Like, I, I, in no way did I understand how that made any sense. But people are going out buying thousand dollar sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Um, one final thing for just for the staking was BlockFi. I don't know if you got involved in BlockFi, but I mean there was a lot of companies that got in trouble with the government because of the way they had everything going. But that's the only benefit I see the U.S government having in in the crypto space is that they are keeping people responsible and keeping companies responsible like binance had to make a specific u.s uh site in a u.s uh based project or company yeah and uh coinbase is based in the u.s and all these companies they have to follow these stricter uh laws it makes me feel just a little bit safer still skeptical like i said yeah well, there's, there is a possibility of good actually coming from the regulation because if, if the regulation is written properly, it will hold companies that are not fiscally responsible accountable. It will hold the scammers accountable. And then the general public will also see, okay, this is accepted by the government. They've written regulations around it. They say it's no longer just being used for criminal activity and therefore people who were previously skeptical about crypto will warm up to the idea and want to invest maybe some of their savings into it yeah uh would you like to move into the last topic do you want to discuss nfts nfts sure what do you think about nfts (sighs) Oh, if you were to ask me a couple months ago, well, probably a year ago, I'd say they're really stupid. And um, I've, I don't know. I guess that's how most people feel about crypto, though, too. I think with NFTs in the beginning, like with Bored Apes and everything, everything's kind of calmed down in that space. It seemed like it was just like a supreme, like a, a fancy designer clothing brand. Everyone needed to have it because it gave them status. But there was literally no use case for it. Um, but now we're starting to see a lot of NFTs coming out, uh, including some YouTubers making some NFTs uh, with some like mining. And like the NFT actually gives you a benefit. Like uh, you'll have a fraction of an a ASIC miner and you get rewards back. Or the NFT grants you access to a special section in a Discord server or something like that. So I think now they're they're becoming they're having a use case which is important if they need to survive in the crypto space yeah i've seen a lot of different analysis on it and i i think yeah the vast majority of them are stupid oh yeah there's there's so many <laughs> there's so yeah. many if you go on open sea that i haven't looked into it enough to see like the ones that are actually useful I haven't done a whole lot of research on it, but uh, what I will say, so I certainly see the use case in gaming, but I don't think it will be utilized because I'm not a gamer, but I've done enough in previous years to see how like many of these large sites run their little mini economies within the game. And of course they want to, you know, keep in control over that. Yeah. And if you were to give people NFTs for, like, let's say, objects in the game that you could purchase, 
and whatever. It usually comes down to like when people are banning or the mods in those games are banning accounts for cheating, then, you know, they still want to be able to wipe all of the their possessions in that account away. Um, the other part comes into like buying actual points or buying gold in the game, which previously has really been um, discouraged in a lot of these games. And now you're really monetizing that through crypto, which game developers, as majority of cases, they don't like. They like to be in control of that and they want you purchasing those in-game items from them. I Maybe think, we'll see the tide shift. Do you, what, do you have thought on that? I think I, I get what you're saying. Um, there's a couple ways. Like if they were to ban the people with the uh, in the games that have NFTs, it could uh, give all of the NFT data back to like the company or something. They could resell it. But uh, that just doesn't seem right. I think they like they should be able to make it so that if they ban people, uh, they can still sell those NFTs uh, because they, they pay for them. Um, also, yeah, but it just comes down to them not liking that idea whatsoever. Yeah. And whether they're going to implement it in that game or not. I could see that. But uh, another thing is like, I don't know if you ever played Counter-Strike. I've played it like yeah. a couple times they have like those super legendary knives and everything i think uh being able to tie that into the crypto space would just give it a little bit more of a cool factor not necessary a a um something that needs to happen but something that uh just ties the game in with crypto and it gives it more of a cool factor for like the young kids that think CSGO is a really old game. And it is, it's, it's like what, 10, 12 years old now, but they're constantly updating it. And, uh, I think a lot of games, if they were to like even GTA five, for example, because of how old that is, if they were to bring in NFTs and the crypto space into a game that old, it would definitely, I think revamp it. But other than that, I don't see it it mattering that much in a lot of these games yeah but there are thousands of nfts that are just stupid like just straight up stupid so too but this is where we get into my crazy uh speculation of yeah of course as always not financial advice and of course i mean tell me what, what you think of, of this theory but we're going to see these different social media sites offer the ability to display your NFTs on your profile by connecting your MetaMask wallet or whatever to it. Yeah, like and Twitter. And of course, the status thing, but every poser in the world is going to want to show how cool they are with their NFTs and how well they know crypto. So that might be what leads up to this next bull run. That usage of the different chains minting these NFTs, selling these NFTs, and displaying them on social media might be the next uh, might be the next big driver now. Yeah, I could see like that. Like I said, wild speculation. I might totally be off on this one, but what do you think about that? I think it would be very interesting to see. Now, I really hope that when people are connecting their their accounts, it's not asking for like any sensitive data. But I think it'd be re really interesting to see. If a whole bunch of people connect their accounts to, let's say, Twitter or Facebook or even like a less secure platform, if they get hacked, if all of that data is then going to be available and hackers could end up stealing the NFTs, they could take them right out of people's accounts and send them to theirs. So that that's something that would be uh, interesting to find out. Only time will tell. I would assume that these large companies would be smart enough to implement some sort of security measure that uh, would not, that, that would make that impossible. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, with MetaMask, when you use sites like that, it usually just makes you sign a message versus um, actually allowing access into your account. It's much like downloading an app, it tells you what you can what the website or app can and can not use like your location your name and all that stuff so yeah 
Um, anything else you'd like to say, Joe? Oh, we were going to discuss the crypto space in general. We can if you want. We're at yeah. about 40 minutes. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up in a little bit. So um, the crypto space has been, hmm, <laughs> it's been giving a lot of, I mean, it, it's it's given us our platform, obviously. There's a lot of good people we've met out of it, but there's also a lot of people that are just toxic. Um, take, for instance, a lot of people in the Helium Discord, actually, they, I mean, we talked about this briefly in the beginning, but they, um, just some of the ways they talk, and it could be taken out of context because it's over text and also because we are content creators. It's like they don't take us serious. It wasn't the only Discord we've seen problems in. Oh, I mean, no, we've seen. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's, it's um, everywhere in the crypto space as well. Twitter, the Facebook groups. It's, uh, I think there's a few factors driving it, but first you're dealing with money basically. And a, a lot of people have these wild expectations when they get into this, that they're going to make all sorts of money. But this is extremely volatile. Many of them don't do their due diligence. I can't tell you some of the questions that I've had as a YouTuber that were like, you didn't look into this before you spent a significant amount of money on this project. Like, that, I, I don't get it. I, I just don't understand how people can um, ape in, as you would say, yeah. to many of these projects without any thought. And that's like the culture. That It's like cool to yeah, definitely get into degenerative investing. Started with like Dogecoin exploding. Everyone yeah, and was then like, people well, cry when they get wrecked. Exactly. And it's everyone else's fault. And everything becomes a Ponzi and a rug pull and everything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it gives a bad name to crypto in general. And it hurts those who are, are trying to be legitimate in this space and come up with, you know, m make these good ideas come true, innovate, and so on. Um, Luna. Yeah. Whatever happened with Luna, and uh, I mean, that really hurt the market. And that was one of those things that got onto the front pages of news. But there's there's rug pulls and scams all the time by just like scummy Absolutely. people. That what people don't, don't understand is you're dealing with code. There is always a chance something's going to go wrong. Yeah. So... I don't know if it's the expectations aren't being set properly for these people coming in. Look, we're on the internet. It's one, you know, one big mob joined together, people airing their grievances. But it gets tiring when, when you have a platform and they come to you for advice, but instead, like, you're their therapist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least we met each other through this right <laughs> of course we can vent to each other about uh some of the things people say yeah i don't know yeah having a youtube channel isn't all it's cracked up to be you know i mean i i have to step away once in a while and really try not to think about it because it get a lot of grief there's pressure on you to get things right and yeah if you make one thing wrong, they will let you know. Oh, yeah. And I've made, I've said a lot of things that were incorrect, but I've usually corrected them in the comments. Not a lot of people read the comments. It's just very, uh, it's like a, a butting heads kind of community for the most part. If, if you don't, if you're not careful, you open yourself up to liabilities. Yeah. You got to say, yeah. you know, it's not financial advice and all this stuff. You don't want to get sued. There's a lot. Yeah, so it, 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 you know, I, I have to say, you know, there's a couple times I said, yeah, do I really want to do this? Do I want to continue making videos? And I enjoy my audience. I, they're what keeps me around because I do have a lot of people who are, you know, they actually put thought and effort and have good ideas and they, they, uh, leave comments of substance and they appreciate the content and they give me good ideas. So that's what keeps me around. I do think there's 
so much potential here. But a lot of the, uh, I, don't, I don't know what you'd like to call it, you know, there's just people who in passing, they have all the hate for you in the world. And for whatever reason, for them, it's personal. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I think this is like um, Rebirth of the Internet Part 2. It's just like a, another layer on, on the Internet, quite literally, with Web 3. So right now we're in like the dawn and there's going to be a lot of a lot of people that don't understand a lot of people that are trying to scam people and i think especially since this is the first bull run a lot of people were a part of the first bull run that i started making videos on crypto you you as well um but we've been in this space for a while you're gonna see a, a huge like a mass adoption as we saw with like dogecoin and everything but we're still new i think what's gonna happen in the next couple of years is we're gonna start to see a lot of these people uh, die out. And I think the crypto industry as a whole is probably going to get, um, I don't want to say like more governmental regulations, but I think it's going to be more, um, on pace to do good things versus bad things. There's still going to be bad things, but the goal is that it outweighs, uh, the bad things. Yeah. No, I certainly think there is something special about this. Um, of course, there's always going to be a lot of bad ideas that come out of, you know, anywhere people can throw money or anywhere people can make a quick buck by scamming others. Yeah, we're going to see a shit show. But I think, you know, the technology's there, the ideas are there. It opens up the marketplace for people who want to get into something like this. There, There's always going to be that... uh that interest as more people find out. Yeah. Well, Joe, anything else you'd like to say? No, I appreciate you having me on and I'm sure we'll do it again soon. Yeah. Thanks for being my first guest. Uh, thank you everyone who's watching live right now. I see three people right now. There's been a couple people popping in and out. Uh, this has been the first episode of blockchain Bay, which is, uh, the Discord server that I, I guess I founded, yeah. I just I just changed the name. I'm trying to make this more of a community, and there's going to be a lot more podcast episodes coming up in the future, so stay tuned for that. My goal is to, like I said, hopefully have the creators or one of the creators from PiFi over here so they can talk about their project, as well as other people in the Discord uh, server and the crypto community. So Joe is a crypto YouTuber, and um, a, I guess, crypto influencer, crypto influencer. So. Yeah, <laughs> but he brings a lot more to the community than that. He talks about all stuff crypto outside of just posting videos, much like me. Like we're not just people that post videos. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the the upcoming episodes, and I hope to see you again on this soon, Joe. Maybe we can co-host the PiFi one or something like that if you're interested. That sounds good. But thank you all for checking out this first episode, and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone.